because here again, Jesus is God, and he's the, he's the one performing this miracle. In front of the, the disciples and the people. It is imperative to receive the compassion of the, of the Lord that brings us to tears. Would that make you cry? Well, I think it would have some sort of influence on your emotions. Because we are just like God. He has emotions. In the, uh, well, I've lost some place. It is imperative to receive the compassion of the Lord that brings us to tears because we then begin to participate in a partner with the, the grip, grips that the heart, grips the heart of Jesus. As we sow tears for our families, of course we cry out to all of our families, the Holy Spirit directed our prayers, friends, in the cities, in the state, in the nation, in the world, and beyond, we will, His divine nature made manifest on earth in a profound way. That's a, you know, that's only an English word that doesn't express the true characteristic of what his power does to this world. It goes beyond profound ways. Ask the Lord to pierce your heart with the Jesus type compassion and to let you partake in what grips his heart. Ask him to help you see the world around you through a different lens, one that causes you to weep because those tears will give you clear vision for restoring what is broken. It's a very difficult thing, and we do, some people turn their eyes against what's going wrong in this country, and it's a shame for that to happen, because we do have to see what's going on. He, he put up watchtowers, and we're to be in those watchtowers to watch. Watch for the enemy, and we're going to come against the enemy. Whatever it is, to show our compassion, to cry. I know we all shed tears. It, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're a Christian, it's going to happen with the devil and all that his destruction forces. And the Bible is just full of these things. And, and again, in an Ecclesiastic, he says there's nothing new on the sun. It always repeats itself. So we can depend that these things that we're reading about today are definitely already, in, you know, in the Bible, they've already transpired. But we're here now. This is a now time for his, for God's people to pull together and to send those prayers up. Or those people are hurting, and we don't really know because we live in this country that's protected by God. But they don't have that. They're sitting right in the enemy's nest. And they're definitely suffering uncomprehensible. Well, I can't, I can't comprehend seeing all the damage that I've been seeing on the TV. It's just not, I'm not on the internet. Whatever. It does not comprehend to me that the power of the destructive forces. But then again, I, I get some relief when I see God moving. When I see what God is doing to those evil people. They're just... The devil is a loser. He's stupid. He's just he's killing innocent people, taking them with them. It's so absurdity, but again, look, what the end times presents, it's just part of it, and we're to be aware of that, and always diligently, every day, pour out tears of compassion for this world and the people and the children that never had a chance. Somebody's going to pull the weight of those lost children, because they're gone. They're already going back to heaven, so we have to know that, and be responsible as a family and always use God giving rights the power that he gave us it's so astounding the power he gave us to move mountains it's just uh, unbelievable what he's given us that we don't use that we should if you're going to only do a 15 minute intercessory prayer warrior prayer that's fine but pull up the weapons the, the, the don't pull up the big guns going to do a short little prayer in the book God honors that and, and it can be a big big prayer that God is uh, moving mightily yes, so it's not God how much time is there. right it's, it's a, a sincerity of heart and how much tears he's, he's listening to Jeremiah 
God would not let Jeremiah die in Egypt. And he, he took he, he, Jeremiah if from history standpoint left and was migrated up to uh, Scotland that far north as far north as he could go and his name was changed from Jeremiah to Olam Balaam which is a wise man and Baruch went with him and that's where that stone of stone where the coronation stone is, that the kings and queens, or whatever the coronation is there in, in Britain, that they had that stone. It's called a stone scone. And they, uh, it originated in Scotland, and then they stole it, took it down to Britain, and then they took it back to Scotland, and it's, in, it's been overturned once, overturned twice, and this is scripture. And it, the third time, it'll be overturned when Jesus returns back in the second coming. Thank you for that little information. I appreciate that. Good job, Well, for whatever reason, something to do with Jeremiah, my request this morning that I speak on patriotism. Can anybody, does anybody want to offer a, what their understanding of patriotism is? I can tell you something, or I can let you contribute. If you well, want. we live in a country that teaches patriotism. And we learned from the very beginning that that standard, that flag right there, represents freedom. And, and that accord, that we are loyal to that flag because of its value, because it represents or the shed blood of our people to protect the, the right for freedom. Patriotism is the feeling of love, devotion, and sense of attachment to one's country. Mm. The attachment can be a combination of many different feelings, language relating to one's own homeland, including ethnic, cultural, political, or historical aspects. It encompasses a set of concepts closely related to nationalism and mostly civic nationalism. And it also has to do with the emphasis on the land. You know, when we look about our nation and, and how diverse it is from coast to coast, north, south, and east, and west, and all the variations of geography and how people have settled in certain regions, certain people groups. I mean, the Scottish came and they settled in the Appalachian Mountains because it made them feel like they were at home. And, you know, as, as our nation progressed west, the pioneers went out, you know, and uh, to settle the land, to inhabit the land. And we have to go back to the beginning of our nation and see where it started. A group of mostly Christian, God-fearing, loving men came together and put together a document like none other in the history of mankind been, that's been assembled by men. Not, not talking about the Bible. I'm talking about a document to establish a nation. And they were so serious about it when they made the Declaration of the Independence. They listed all the reasons why and all the wrongs that had been done to them by the King of England. And they said, we're now, you know, we're going to break you off from you. I'm paraphrasing. But in the last, this is the last sentence in the Declaration of Independence. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. They were attributing to who this was, it was guiding them, that they were under the protection of divine providence. And they were laying, willing to lay down their lives and everything they own in order for this to take place. That's how willing they were. Give up everything. Because they said at one point, 
we can either hang together or we can hang separately. Mm -hmm. We can either come together as a group or we're going to get picked off individually and we're going to get hung. We'll hang together or hang separately. They knew the seriousness of this declaration. They knew the seriousness what they were about to do was life and death. And they wound up going into a fight with the most powerful army in the world at that time. The most powerful army, well-trained, well-equipped in every kind of form and fashion. And they came over here. And somehow, some way, this ragtag group of colonists beat them. Somehow, some way. I mean, there were miracles in mean, some of the battles that George Washington fought, where they would come in as they were retreating, a fog would move in behind them as they were retreating to block the enemy from keeping up with them. I mean, all kinds of, you have to read it. So many miracles of them, you know, getting somewhere. And how they lost battle after battle after battle until on a Christmas Eve, they decided on a daring plan. They crossed the Delaware River in frigid temperatures, walking through snow. Some of them wearing rags on their feet because they didn't have any shoes. And they came into a town when a blizzard's happening where a bunch of German Hussians were who had been hired as mercenaries yeah. by the British, surrounded the town, came into the town, and they were all asleep in their beds. And they won a battle without firing a shot. Captured a whole bunch of them. All of them captured it. And it was like a shockwave when it happened. And so we won that we won that battle. The British left, but then they came back in 1812 and started stirring up trouble again. And they were bombarding a, a fort out in the middle of, of a bay. But outside Baltimore, Fort McHenry. They were bombing the heck out of it with cannons and missiles. And a man by the name of Francis Scott Key was on board one of the ships. He was an attorney. He was there to try to arrange the exchange of prisoners. And he sat there and watched it all night long. And he wrote Star Spangled Banner as a result of that. And when you, next time you want to get some tears going, go to YouTube and bring up the Star Spangled Banner and get them to sing the whole thing. We only sing the first verse. And he, he talks about God, you know, in the song. He was a Christian also, see? So our nation was established in such a manner to establish a freedom like no other that's been, ever been in the world, a free place, that wound up being a place to harbor some of the Jews that had been scattered all over the world, came here, to find a peaceful place where they weren't being persecuted. I think it's one of the main reasons God established this nation, to give them a safe harbor until 1948 when they got their nation back. Our nation has a, a wonderful history. Is it all good? No. Some of it's not good, the way they treated the Indians. The slavery issue was not good. I mean, we have some black eyes, but we moved to try to get past those things, put a stop to some of it. And it was Christians that were trying to put a stop to it, the treatment. Christians constantly having involvement in their government. And we moved forward and we fought in two world wars and we, we finished them. So we have a rich heritage and a rich history. And you, most of us in this room, were brought up to learn the Pledge of Allegiance. We start, got, when we got in the classroom the first thing in the morning, we did a Pledge of Allegiance. And then we sang the Star Spangled Banner when the flag was raised. And we put our hands on our heart. And we did it. But we, we were established on a foundation. We were taught, I, I mean, I was taught, you know, about Jamestown, 1604. You know, when they first landed and established the first colonies there in Jamestown in Virginia. And up in, in Massachusetts, the Pilgrims, you know, established to begin to colonize this new nation. We, we learned all that. Kids today aren't learning this. No. They're not being told. Why? Because they're being cut off from the history. Yes. So they won't have a love for our country. Yes. They just think it's 
and then they hear all this liberal garbage on TV trying to put our nation down. And that's why we that are, have understand all this and are true patriots, we need to make sure we pass it on to our children and our children's children. What a wonderful place this is. It may not be the, the best thing. It, it's not perfect. But if, it, if it's such a bad place that some people say it is, why are so many people flooding across our border yeah, in here? there you go. Why are they coming here? It's true. They it doesn't make any here. sense. If this was such a bad place, they're coming from all around the world, flooding through our borders right now yeah. because of a lack of leadership. But I'm not going to get off on that okay. rant. <laughs> yeah, no, so Lord, we thank you that you established the United States of America. From its genesis, your hand was upon it. And Lord, we, I love, I, everyone in this room loves this nation. We love to see our flag waving in the wind. I love singing the Star Spangled Banner. And Lord, I just lift up America right now. And I cry out to all patriots across this nation to stand up and make things right. Get us back on the on the track that God would have us to be. Lord, I ask you to pour out revival on America. Wake up all the, the true patriots, the true red-blooded Americans that are out there. They're still, we outnumber all those that don't love the nation the way it should be loved. And Lord, help us to love you and to love our nation that you established. And I praise you for all that you've done and all that you're still going to do because you still have a covenant with us, whether we like it or not, whether we realize it or not, we still are in covenant with you as a nation. And you're, and you're not done with America yet. I thank you for it. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The reason I wanted you to talk about that is because uh, in contrast to Jeremiah, God showed me something about Jeremiah and the people that God told them, if you'll stay here in the land, I'll bless you with food, and I'll protect you against foreign armies. But they just were so bent. They went to Egypt. And God said, if you go to Egypt, it's so clear, if you go to Egypt, you will die by the very things you're fearful of. You will die from war, and you will die from famine. So they were having this inner struggle between self-preservation versus trusting God. And so they, one of their sins was a lack of patriotism. Because if they had been patriotic about their land, and God said, I'll protect you here, and I'll provide for you here, then what would they have done? If they had patriotism. For Israel, they were proud to carry the flag of Israel, and and even though that was a desolate country at the time, still they would have stayed there out of love, like you described, right? Mm -hmm. Don't you think they would have stayed there? Um, so I was just these were some questions I was thinking about: is how do people act when they are patriotic? Jack, I'm interviewing you. Oh. I didn't realize that was an interview. What kind of they act? You want me to stay up there? All right. I'm seeking the softer. <clears throat> Something softer from my bottom. What's the question? How do people act when they're patriotic? When they see the flag coming out and their pledge of allegiance is being said, they 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 they, they say it. When the Star Spangled Banner is sung, they sing it. And they honor the flag. They protect the flag. They, there are certain ways that you are to handle the flag of the United States of America. There are rules on how it's to be handled. It's never supposed to touch the ground. And it's supposed to be placed in the room as such. It's supposed to be put outside in a certain manner. If it's left out at night, it's supposed to have lights on it. There are rules, and you follow those rules on how the flag is to be honored. 
because it is what rep it's the representative symbol of our nation. Of our commitment to our yeah. nation. Yeah. I mean, it's the symbol, yes, of our commitment to our nation. And you don't run the nation down. If you see problem, fix it. You don't speak out and try to tear everything down because of the problems. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think too many black people are being killed, go where they're being killed and, and put a stop to it. You know, that's, that's the hypocrisy of Black Lives Matter. The only time they're concerned about it is if a white police officer shoots a black person. They don't care about the hundreds that are being slain, black men killing black men in all the major cities. Yeah. They don't give a hoot about the black lives. Any, they're communists. Yeah. I'm just saying that's not patriotism. What Antifa it did to our our towns, tearing things down and burning things and looting, that is not patriotism. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to resolve any problems. They're causing problems. So what does a patriot do in a national crisis? They rise up to defend the country. It's what, it, look what happened in World War II. They dropped the bomb on Pearl Harbor. The lines to join the army, the, to, uh, the, the wherever, he, the, what would you call it? The recruiter. recruiter stations had lines going out down the street and around the block. Young men running the, the next day to sign up and join the military. That's what you do. So if we had a, a national crisis where one ethnicity in our country rose up to try to take over the country, what should the patriots do? Run off to an island to protect themselves from the war? No. Or try to make it down into Mexico? No. They'll Why? stay here and defend the country and, and try to do what's right. Do what do what is necessary to, to keep our uh, way of life in place, to hopefully to reestablish our government. Our government right now is going astray. We're being led by people who are not out. They're not trying to help America. They're trying to destroy America. Mm -hmm. And at some point, the patriots of this nation are going to have to rise up and put a stop to it. Mm -hmm. Not overthrow the government but reestablish the government. That's a good thought with regard to Jeremiah and what was going on because he could, if the people had stayed there, they could have organized. <coughs> you know, they could have organized. They could have, they were supposed to. <coughs> Even Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm leaving you here to tend the vines and the wildlife, what, what livestock. Um, and so they could have organized so they were doing a good job on that instead of be fearful. Because even Nebuchadnezzar said it. So I just think some people would be afraid of self-preservation, a fear of the being killed in this, if there was a national crisis, of being killed in the national crisis by some army that might, you know, rise up, or afraid they could get enough food. Because that's what drove them to Egypt where they died by the things they were afraid of because they wouldn't trust God that he would provide food. Did you know that? Mm -mm. That's what I was teaching when you were in the other room with the little boy. Um, with children. Be fine and patriotic. Not anti-patriotic, but unpatriotic. Huh? That was their sin in Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. When they sing the Star Spangled Banner, you take a knee. That's unpatriotic. Yeah. When you disrespect the flag and you do something no, that's, that's anti patriotic. No, that's unpatri unpa unpatriotic. A display, you know, an open display of disrespect. Now, how does patriotism compare to politics? Patriotism is love of country. Politics is a mindset on how you think the government should be run or how the nation should be run. And some of it, people have a mindset that is not patriotic. 
some, hopefully the majority, have a mindset that are patriotic and they make decisions for the good of the country, not to harm the country. They don't say, well, because Russia attacked Ukraine, we're going to stop purchasing their oil because we're going to punish them and we're going to stop purchasing their oil. So in turn, you say, well, if you're punishing them by stopping the oil flow, what is it? why'd you stop the oil flow here? Mm -hmm. You know, if that's punishment, what is this? When you intentionally do something to harm the economy yeah. of our nation. We got punished. Yeah, yeah. We, we got punished. Because they, they want us to become the Green New Deal. Well, it's all foolishness. Yeah. And it's unpatriotic. They do not love this country. No. Yeah. They're trying to, well... It's all part of a plan to destroy the United States of America. Because yes. 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 the United States of America is the only thing that's holding the lid on things around the world. In order for them to establish uh, a globalism, a one world government, they have to do away with the United States. Because they'll, the United States can put a stop to it. We have the, the power and the means to do it. So this, that's why they're raising up a generation right now. It's not being taught about our history. You have to know what your foundation is. If you have an unsure foundation, you won't know what to do. You, you won't care. You won't care what happens because, you know. I don't think they're not being taught. I think they're not remembering it. I know no, our teachers I, in Oak Ridge schools are they're teaching. They're not even teaching. They're not history. even. The kids today don't even know what the Vietnam, Vietnam War was. Well, you saw a little video clip of some kids who forgot what they were taught. I don't know that they're sure not about being James taught Taylor. as much as they aren't remembering because the world is clouding their interest. Well, I think you're right about that. I don't think you're teaching a whole lot about George Washington. No. Even Abraham Lincoln. I don't think either one of those two leaders. I mean, you hear a politician once when I quote something. I don't think they're really in, involved in teaching. You know, they went out and tore down statues. Yeah, that was... Waste. Black people went out and tore down statues of men that helped put a stop to slavery because they don't, they're ignorant about who the history and who that person was. They see a statue, we're going to tear it down. That's what the communists take, that's what happens in a communist takeover. Destroy the, the symbols of the nation, destroy the history of the nation. That's, more, that's, so more that's a good uh, example. Yeah. Un uh, un Unpatriotic. Un ignorance. I mean, ignorance. We're, we're having that surface. Go down, uh, go, they went to tear down Abraham Lincoln statue. Right. Who, because who? of the liberal people, that that's what happened to Israel. They became a liberal uh, country instead of following God. Yeah. They had to follow their own 